in today's video. We're going to be using household items. We're talking straws, pasta, garbage. We're gonna use all the things that you can find in your house to make some really fun prints. And you don't really need to have any experience because I don't have any experience. And you can create tons and tons and tons and tons of cool backgrounds that you can use for cards, art pieces, whatever, all in today's video. So let's get to it. Meet my gel plate. This is what I'm using in the video today. It's an eight by 10 gel plate from Jelly Arts. To start with, I have heard that you can use a glass surface or glass plate or something like that in substitution of your gel plate. But the gel plate is a gelatinous, probably saying that wrong, surface. So it's bendable and squishy. And I, and you, God, you get a lot of mileage. And as you can see here, I'm not, I haven't even cleaned my plate. I don't clean my plate, but more on that in a bit. Uh, so this is what I'm using. They come in a whole bunch of different sizes. They have some that are five by six. So for card makers, this is eight by 10. They have nine by 12. They have circles, they have squares. And then I've got two brayers here. You don't need to grab one. I've got a four inch and a two inch. And then you need some paint of some kind. They're the best medium I have found. They're very forgiving for amateurs like myself. Uh, that is very new to gel printing. Uh, so get yourself some paint. You can go to the dollar store if you don't have any paint on your own. And then some paper. You can use your copy paper or printer paper if you want to. I am using index paper from Nina. It is sold on Amazon in a ream, which is 250 sheets for under $10. Thank you, Ingrid, for letting me know about that. And that's what I'm using because it's a little bit thicker then regular printer or copy paper, but not thick like your good cardstock. So I'm just going on with different color acrylic paints and brayering them on. I also have a free worksheet for you, and it's gonna go into detail about all the household items that you can use for gel printing, which is basically what this video is about. I've got a couple videos already on my channel about gel printing, I'll link to them in the description. But uh, this is all about household items because I don't want you to think you've got to run out and go buy all these things. Really, you need a gel plate or glass surface, I suppose. I've never tried it. A brayer of some kind, some paint, and some paper. All right, those are the basic things you need, and then you can really start printing. So here I just put on a rainbow of acrylic paint. I'm pressing that down onto the plate and pulling it. This is called pulling a print. I sound so professional. And look, you got this beautiful background here. So this is an old plate that I let all this paint dry on. So what, whatever you can kind of see there in that background that's black, that is old dried paint from my last printing session. Uh, I don't know if I already said this, but I am not an expert at printing, but it's so much fun. And I wanted to show you that anyone can do it because if I can do it, you can do it. And this is probably only my sixth or seventh time printing. So I put on too much paint. That is definitely something that happens to many, many people. So if that happens, you can kind of pull a print or just dab a little paper on like I did, or I'm brayering and removing some of that paint. I've got some scratch paper over there on the right hand side. I went in way too heavy. And if you do that, I find that your paint never dries. <laughs> All right, let's get into some stuff that you might have around your house. This is a shelf liner from your kitchen where your plates and glasses and whatever sit on. I have a whole roll. So I just cut a little bit and that's what I used for that little background. This is some twine or string. I never I don't even know why I have this, but I do. So I'm just placing it onto the wet paint and kind of pushing it in there. And that's gonna give me the designs of the string. I'm trying not to get my hands really dirty, but you know, what are you gonna do? It's paint. You could wear gloves if you want to, but I'm not gonna be bothered. So I'm actually brayering that string down in there to really make sure that it picks up the paint there. So for this, you really want your paint to be wet. If it's dried, obviously nothing's gonna pull up. So. We got my shelf liner, I gotta go back in and add my texture. Shelf liner, some string. I'm gonna use a toilet roll. This is a toilet roll that I just wrapped in string. If you have rubber bands, that would be great too, but I don't have any. So I just wrapped some string and taped it on the edges there and it creates these fun little lines and then you can use the edges to create little circles. Those remind me of little coffee stains, just the circles. Typically your coffee stains wouldn't be green. Well, there's green tea. I don't know. Anyway, Q-tips. I just gathered a bunch together and <laughs> I don't have any rubber bands. So I just taped it with some packaging tape and you can use that. This is pasta. I got this idea from Carolyn Doobie. This is just linguine, if you really must know, and any kind of pasta, whatever. And again, I just tied it with some string and packaging tape to keep it secure. 
Thank you, Carolyn. That was just like a great idea. I don't think I would have ever thought to go in my kitchen and get pasta. So this is a piece of white index cardstock. Use copy paper if that's what you have. And then you can either press it with your hand or I'm just using a brayer. It cleans my brayer off at the same time. Uh, and I'm just making sure that that paper hits that paint. I want it to pick up all the paint, all the texture I just put down, all the designs from the household items. And then watch this. When this comes up, oh, you can see every bit of texture that I put down just from my household items. Junk I had laying around the house. Seriously. All right, let's try it again. So this is a plate that I cleaned off with just a piece of paper. There's still some green left on there from the previous print, no big deal. I'm putting on some pink acrylic paint and this is a hair pick. This is old, my gosh. My mom had this when I was at her house. I'm like, I'm taking my hair pick from when I was 10 years old. I'm gonna use it, but not for my hair. And uh, anyway, it makes really cool lines. So I'm taking a print that I really did not like and I'm going to pull a print from this. So it's a print that was dark. It looked like it was just very dark for me. So I'm gonna press it down. I'm gonna transfer all that paint and all the lines from that pick, hopefully, is gonna show up when I pull this print. So again, you wanna give it time for the paint to transfer. If you have to do a little peeky peek, that's okay. No harm, no foul, and taking a little peek. And then pull it and check that out. Bada bang, bada boom, that is cool. It looks like a forest. If you changed up your color, you would have yourself a beautiful forest background there. Ah, so pretty. So those pink stripes that are on there now are almost dry because I've already pulled a print. So I pulled off all the wet paint. So what I'm gonna do now is I have a thing for gold. Mixing, in, I don't even wear gold jewelry, so this is what's fascinating, but I love gold paint. And this is a metallic gold. And I'm gonna go in and just brayer it on ever so lightly ever so lightly it got me a little clump there in the in the middle and that actually is going to turn out pretty cool so i'm going to immediately take a print so all that's wet so it should pull up the gold and some of the pink all right it should pull up the wet paint and whatever is underneath the wet paint and let's see if it does <gasps> check this out i love it i even love that little blob of gold in the middle so this might be one of my favorites. And I love the black that's kind of that grungy look. And I'm not even a grungy person, but I love it. All right, leaves. We all have them, especially this time of year. About a week ago, me and my daughter went walking around the neighborhood collecting leaves. And that's what I'm going to use for the next several prints. So I'm going on this plate with some green paint, plain and simple, just brayering it on there. And then, of course, oh, I'm going in with gold. I'm so predictable, but use what colors you got. Use what paints you got. And again, you don't need to go buy expensive paints. Try to get acrylic paints. Don't get heavy body paints because they're super thick, and they're going to dry before you even have time to pull a print. So acrylic paints are the best. And here are my leaves for my leaf collecting. Now, I've never done this. I'm totally winging it with you on my camera, so... This is fun. So I'm going to go in and add leaves. And here's kind of the finished look, making sure it fills the plate. And then I'm going to go in with an old print. I don't know what I'm doing. So at first, I just kind of wanted to create a mask, if you will. So I wanted the leaf impression to be left in the plate. So I'm just brayering it on here, just pressing the leaf down into the wet paint. And when you pull that up, look at that's pretty cool. Got this nice leaf mask, if you will. So this is cool, I'll set that aside. I pulled up all the leaves off the plate, so now you can see what's left. You can see most of the paint outside from around the leaves are, are gone, because we pulled it up from the last print. And now we're gonna take a print of this. And this is, this is neat, you guys. So press, 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 press it down, bada bada bang, you know the drill here, and check this out. Oh, this is such a cool print. Look at that. Look at look at all the, you can see all the veins from the leaves. I'm sorry. I'm just so giddy. I've never done this before. So I'm going to go in with a, a plate that doesn't have any wet paint on it and add some more leaves that my daughter and I collected from our little walk. And I'm just playing. These leaves are so crunchy. So when I do roll over them, you hear crunch, crunch, crunch. It's hilarious. So now that I know what leaves I'm going to put on the plate, that was kind of like a mock-up. I needed to make sure that the leaves fit on the plate. I'm going to add some pink. Brayer it on. You know the drill. And I'm going to grab my household items and start creating more designs. So I've got my toilet paper roll with the string wrapped around it. I'm going to use it as the string and also the edges for my circles. This is an old crappy paintbrush. 
Let's see, what else I got? What else am I gonna pull? Oh, a straw. You can make little itty bitty circles with straws. And make sure to grab that free PDF. There's a whole bunch more stuff on there other than the things I'm using in today's video. And there's also some guidance uh, like Q&As, you know, frequently asked questions. How do you clean it? What do you do? What kind of mediums can you put on your plate? That kind of thing. That's all in the free document I'm giving you. And that link is in the description below for you. So I added some string and now I'm bringing around to take a print. And here's a look with the string actually left on the plate. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like with the string pulled up, but also this is called a ghost print because I'm not adding any more of that pink paint. I'm not adding any more paint. I'm just going to immediately take a second print before that paint dries. And this one I love the most between the both of them. I mean, look at this. It pulls up everything. Pulled up more gold, so it's more of a grungy look. I like that the string was pulled up, so it's not leaving that mask. Like you can see here, this is very like an in-your-face print, and the other one isn't. So it's all taken from the same plate which is what is so cool about it. Oh, you heard Max there. So anyway, yeah, so it's really intense because you're picking up that wet paint and then that second print is everything. All right, let's do another leaf one because, you know, we have leaves, so why not? But let's not do pink, let's not do gold, let's do a gray or a black, whatever. So I put on some black paint and now I'm going and impressing the leaves into the wet black paint. And I'm trying to add as many leaves as I can. And then I'm gonna take a print, and I'm using my brayer, and at this point it's going crunch, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. That was awful sound effect, horrible. Anywho, and then I'm gonna pull this up, and it's gonna leave this cool mask. We're gonna do something with that. We're going to do something with that. So I'm gonna peel up the leaves there, and so it's leaving the impression of the leaves on the plate, right? So that's super cool. And then I'm going to, while that plate is drying, I'm going to take my leaf and just kind of add some of that impression back from the paint that was left over on the leaf. We're still going to do more to this print, but I wanted to show you, hey, you can do that. You can add paint to the leaf. They're delicate, so you want to be gentle. I mean, these are like half dead leaves or all dead leaves. I don't know. Anyway, so you can add your texture and your print and your fun back by pressing the leaf onto that masked area. I do wanna take a minute and thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I absolutely adore them, as you know. I'm getting into different kinds of watercolor things and landscapes, so I'll be sure to share those in the future. But Jane Davies is by far my favorite animal watercolorist. She has gotten me into the world of watercoloring animals. And I have done so many prints and I have given so many prints to people and I just love her style. Here's a look at all the things that I did. The first 1,000 people to click the link below will get something a little free free so be sure to check the description below for all of the details and click that link and thank you again Skillshare for sponsoring. All right so once I've added a little bit of texture from each of the leaves now you know this these open spaces of this print leaves so many possibilities you don't have to press the pattern back of the leaves but I think it's cool we're still going to do a little bit more to this print in a second. But for now, I wanna work on the plate now that that black paint is dried. I added a little bit of purple and white to the plate and I'm just gonna use some scratch paper to pull a little bit of that up. Not a lot, but a little bit. And so now most of that that's on the plate now is dry. So now I'm gonna go in and try to press the impressions of the leaves back in. There's some pink on that leaf because I just added the pink before when I was working on that piece. So I'm going to go in after I've got the leaves, I'm going to use my household items. You got my toilet paper, DIY, lines, just whatever you want to do, or you can do absolutely nothing. So then I'm going to go in with a little bit of gold. I gave it some time for that, for that purple and pink to dry. It's not completely dry, uh, but it's almost dry. And then I'm adding a very thin layer of gold. You can see part of those leaves, it's actually resisting the gold paint. This is what makes it cool. This is a plain piece of white paper. I'm going to pull this print and this one, I say this every time, but I really have no idea what I'm going to get. I don't know if I'm going to get something ugly or not. I just have absolutely no clue. So when I pull this up carefully, don't rip it too hard because you don't want to rip your paper. Check it out. Look at what was left behind. I mean, I never know what I'm going to get when I take a pull, but this is just so cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. You get some stripes from the stripe work we did with the hair pick. Uh, you get some of those little dots from the q-tips and from the shelf liner it's just wickedly cool household items people don't run out and buy a bunch of stuff just look in your house pull some stuff out of the garbage you never know so i'm applying a very thin coat of pink paint it's almost translucent because you can see everything that's underneath it 
And then I'm going to grab some string, twine, whatever, and I'm going to add a little bit of, of something with the string. I'm using the brayer to really push the string into the paint. And then when I pull up the string, it's actually pulling up the paint that's on the plate as well. And then I'm going to take that leaf print we just did a few minutes ago. I told you we were still going to work on it. And we are. And here's what it kind of looked like when we added the, the leaf back into it, when I pressed the leaf back into the masked areas. And now I'm going to pull up everything. So everything that was white should be pink. And then you still get a look of some of that string sprinkled throughout there. But if you want to do more, you can take some of those household items. This still has some gray paint on it or teal paint or whatever's on there. I don't care. Add some paint, add some gold, do whatever you want to do. And you can take some of those items and add some more texture into the prints if you're not happy with how it looked or if you're too afraid to. Because when you're taking a print, you're, you're basically winging it because you can't see. So you're putting your print face down and hoping to God you line it up in the right way. So this is another way you can kind of see what you're doing and get some really cool effects there as well. Shelf liner. That's probably one of my favorite things. But here's a look at this final print. I left it alone after this. I think all the extra doodads I did really was cool. I see the circle from the toilet paper. <laughs> I see shelf liner. I see string. It's so funny. Nobody that gets this print is going to see all these household garbage that you use but still all right so the stencil stencil is the final thing i didn't want to end a gel printing video without first showing you a mistake and i made a big woozy here uh, but a stencil as well because stencils and gel prints go really well together i don't know what this little tool is it was in my cleaning supplies I have absolutely i've never used it i don't know what it is this was what my oranges came in from the grocery store uh <laughs> and then i got my my word stencil is what I'm trying to say. My mistake, well I made two. First of all, I'm going to brayer white on white. That is dumb. You're not going to be able to see white on white. All right, you're just not going to see it. So this was a mistake. So I'm going to just grab a piece of scratch paper and pull that right up. I'm going to pull up all that paint. The second mistake is I should have put the stencil on the opposite way because I should have flipped it over because now all my words are going to be backwards and you'll see what I mean. My bad, so learn from me. Flip it over if it's a word stencil. Flip it over to where you can't read the words and then you know you have it the right way. So now I've got this on here. I let it dry. It's good and dry. I think an afternoon had gone by before I got back to this. You don't have to let it dry an afternoon, but I'm just saying at this point, let it dry really good, especially the words because you really want to pick up all the words and it would have been nice if it was in the right direction. Put on a very thin coating of whatever your favorite color paint is. I can see everything underneath, so that's how I know I'm doing a good job. And then I'm going to take the print. But remember, if you use a word stencil, make sure you put the stencil face down. So if you can't read it, you did it right. If you can read it, you did it wrong. <laughs> so make sure you press, press, press. Maybe even wait a little while. Let it just settle on there. All right? And once you're ready, take a peek if you have to. It's okay. You can peek and then go ahead and just gently peel back your print. And this one turned out cool. I love all the gold, all the grunge, everything. I love the words, even though they're backwards. <laughs> Here's a look at this finished print. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I've got two videos that I've put up on my channel in the past on gel printing. I'm linking right here. Go check them out. I turn prints into cards. So let me know if you have a favorite. Do you have any household items around your house you think would be good for printing? Let me know in the comments below. Look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you next week.